Hello, welcome to the Scratch Coding Class. In today's video of the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 Guide, we'll be looking at gears. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. So this topic is quite difficult to understand, so I'm taking a slightly different approach to teaching it. Instead of having the robot, I'm just going to focus only on gears and go through a lot of theory. And then maybe once you do get gears, then you can start building with the robot. But don't worry about it. This concept is quite difficult for most beginners. So if you do not understand parts, rewatch the video and you'll get it eventually. So gears, we have looked at gears in lesson 7 and gears are used to change the direction of motion. A series of gears used to transfer motion is called a gear train and this is a simple gear train because there are only two gears in it. Any gear train with more than two gears is called a compound gear train and today we are only looking at simple gear trains. So with gears, if you turn one gear, the other gear will turn. Regardless of which gear is turned, if you turn one gear, the other one rotates in the opposite direction. And the gears must be touching by the way in the train. If they are not touching, the teeth cannot mesh and the teeth basically is the small bits that are sticking out on each gear and smaller gears will always rotate faster than larger gears so keep that in mind we have some definitions here so the input gear is the gear that is turned which in most cases would be the motor turning it so the one that's attached to the motor is the input gear the output gear is the result of the gear train and the gear ratio is the number of teeth on the output gear divided by the number of teeth on the input gear. And that is a very, very important concept because we'll be looking at speed and torque. And if you do not understand gear ratio, you're not going to understand any of that. So make sure you also learn that equation. It's very important because some people, they like to divide input by output and that doesn't really work because you get the wrong answer. So make sure it's output divided by input. So I want you to pause the video and try to calculate the gear ratio of these two trains. Okay, so for, for this first one, we have gear ratio is equal to the output over the input, which in this case is 20 for the output, and then we have 12 for the input, and that gives you 1.667 as your gear ratio. For this one, um, gear ratio is equal to 36 in the output divided by 36 in the input, and that would give us a gear ratio of 1. So well done if you got those correct. So now that we've looked at gear ratio, we can start looking at how gear ratio affects speed. And basically, as the gear ratio increases, speed decreases. So for example, let's say we have a gear train with a gear ratio of 4. So that means the output gear will spin 4 times slower than the input gear. So try and remember that. And it is quite confusing because when you... Uh, mix it in with torque which we're going to look at later then it's torque is the complete opposite so remember as the gear ratio increases then speed decreases and i'm going to show you some examples here so over here we have a motor and a wheel and this is without any gears let's say we put this time a gear train at the back of the motor and that gear train has a gear ratio of three now watch what happens So the program to control that motor is at the same speed, however, the wheel is moving slower in that one. And that comes back to what I said earlier, so that means the output gear will spin three times slower than the input gear. Now if we want to increase speed, we need a low gear ratio. So this gear ratio is a third, so that means speed decreases by a factor of a third, but that's basically the same as saying speed increases by a factor of three. So if we take a look at this... That motor spins really really fast and gears are so important because let's say you are making like a race car robot to move as fast as it can you want to have a very low gear ratio when working with the motors so that's how gear ratio is used torque is a rotational force about an axis and it is the product of a force and the distance between the force and the axle that is quite confusing torque is the motor's ability to deal with load so for example if you have a motor that has a very heavy weight that has to lift that means you're going to need a lot of torque and a large gear ratio increases torque so if i have a gear ratio let's say four then torque would increase by a factor of four and you need to make sure that you do not get confused with speed so look at this example so we calculated a gear ratio of 1.667 earlier so basically speed will decrease by that factor 
However, torque will increase by a factor of 1.667 in that train. And when you're constructing your gear trains, you need to make sure you have a good balance of both because you don't want to go for 100% speed and like no torque at all because then the motor won't be able to move. So you have to have a good balance. But if you go for too much torque, then you're not going to have enough speed. It's going to be far too slow. So keep that in mind when you are building gear trains. Okay, so I'm going to test you with this quick question to make sure you understand everything. So I want you to calculate the gear ratio of this train and tell me if the gear train has a high or low speed and torque. So pause the video and have a think. So the gear ratio for this one is 12 as the output gear and then 36 as the input which would give us 0.33 and this gear train that means that speed decreases by a factor of 0.33 but that's basically saying it increases by a factor of 3 approximately so that means it has a high speed and then torque it would increase by a factor of 0.33 which means it's basically decreasing by a factor of 3 so that means it has low torque and that is all there is really to gears and speed and torque for simple trains we're not going to look at compound trains because they're way harder and now we are going to take a quick look at different types of gears so spur gears and the ones that we've been working with generally they are used to transfer motion between parallel axles and we have bevel gears which are used to transfer motion between perpendicular axles and then double bevel gears can be used for either one so here's a video of a bevel gear attached to this motor i want you to watch the black gear there we go so the black gear is basically moving to the complete opposite direction perpendicular to the bevel gear and now we're going to look at constructing some gear trains so when you're constructing gear trains you always want to make sure that the gear can actually move so make sure you can put it through an axle and then you can put that axle through a round hole and that will give the gear freedom to move and you want one gear attached to some sort of a movement like a motor or you can just control it by hand if you want and that is my advice for making a gear train. You always want to make sure the beams are stable and they don't move and that ensures that the gears are in place because if they um, move out of the required position then the teeth will not meet together. So that's everything for today's video of the LEGO Mindstorms EVP guide. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at gears. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.